I speak unto thee this day, and I say, count it a privilege, a privilege, a privilege, to be loved by me. For I say, if you really consider that I, the living God, am the one true God who reigns supreme, that I am over heaven and earth, that I am the one who owns all the souls of all men, I say, consider it a privilege to be loved by me. For I say, it is me, the living God, who does give unto thee my forgiveness, mercy, as you will continue in the repentance revolution I have set before thee. For I say that I've never called my people to grow proud, to grow weary of my humility way, and think they find a better way. For I say when men will be developed in pride, I say they are developed in deceit. But I say that I do not call thee to deception, but I say that I call thee to the truth, the light, the strength that I provide. And I say that I call thee to be thankful each day, that it is me that you can continue to look unto, to believe, to trust, and obey. For I say it is me, the living God, who will cause thee to be brought forth. It is me, the living God, who will bring me into the newness of life that I provide. And I say it is a privilege to be loved by me. Now I say, consider if by the living God have loved thee when you were not worthy of my love. Can you not likewise love others who are not worthy of my love? That is, can you not extend the same love that I, the living God, have given unto thee, unto the wretched, the miserable, the anguished, who are dying and perishing in sins? That is, that you love them in the sins that you care that their souls would be redeemed from the penalty that is awaiting them. That is, that you care enough to proclaim unto them their need to repent. For I say that I, the living God, have given thee the privilege, the opportunity to live your lives for me, I say, be thankful each day for the same. That is, be thankful that you have been given acquittal by my mercy, and likewise desire others to receive the same. For I say you are not meant to be selfish in my love towards thee, but I say you are meant to be giving out the same. That is, because you have been loved by me, I say you will be enabled to love others likewise. For I say it is a wondrous, a beautiful thing to keep on loving, to keep on serving, to keep on coming forth in me. That is, to keep on being uplifted and directed and guided and instructed in the truth, the light, the strength that I provide. For I say it is me, the living God, who does show unto thee the way that is my truth, the way that is my light, and the way that is my mercy. And it is me, the living God, who will ever direct, correct, and bring thee forth each and every day. For I say, when you really consider what it is that I do for thee, I say that I give thee newness of life. And I say, when you really consider how much that I, the living God, have done for thee, I say, how can you really complain? For I say, there is no complaint that stands against me, for I say that I reign supreme. And I say that the love that I've given unto those who will walk in repentance before me is beyond what men can do. For I say, it is me, the living God, who has extended my love in the extent that I gave my life, that men, when they believe upon me, could be forgiven, that is, redeemed of the penalty of their sins. That is, that they will not spend eternity in hell, but they will be able to come forth rejoicing in me. For I say, it is only through me, the living God, that the newness of life is to be found, is to be given. For I say, there is none other that can give the same. And I say, when you will indeed partake of me, then you are uplifted in my way. Now I say that I, the living God, am through my love extending the call to all men to repent. And I say, when men will obey me, then they are given the privilege to come forth in me. That is, renewed, uplifted, directed, and guided, and instructed in the way of life that is found in me. And I say, they are given the privilege to continue steadfast because it is me that they serve. Now I say this day that I, the living God, never ever intended that my own people would go in the way of their own understanding, would allow their lives to be ruled by their own carnality or the carnality of others. But I say that I've intended that my people would be ruled by me, for it is me they are meant to please. And I say if you consider how much love I have extended to the sons of men and giving them the opportunity to be redeemed, I say how great is that love. For I say that my love is literally unfathomable to the imaginations of men, and I say that I desire that you would be in the same. That is, ever in the spirit of gratitude and the attitude of thanksgiving, because you have been privileged to be loved by me. 
And I say that I do not call thee to grow selfish, to grow greedy, to grow covetous, because you are loved by me. But I say that I call thee to be ever giving forth the same love that has been extended unto thee. For I say you are meant to be my vessels, you are meant to honor me, and I say you are meant to show forth how much mercy there is to be found in me. For yes, indeed, it is true that I am the God of mercy, and likewise the God of wrath. And I say that I desire to exhibit my mercy unto the ones who will be accepting of me. That is, the ones who will see the error of their way, repent, and turn fully unto me, and embrace my love. For I say it is a privilege to be loved, it is a privilege to be brought forth, directed, and corrected in my way. For I say when men will be receiving the love that I have in store, then I say they are found well-pleasing. But I say when men through pride and arrogance and vain conceit will reject my love because they think they do not need the same, what do they do? I say they reject the life that I could have given unto them, and I say they choose instead to go in the way of death. Now there are conditions that are found in my love despite what it is that men would say. For I say there are those who promote a false love delusion and claim that it is all of me. But I say they are fools who are setting themselves up for wrath because of their misconduct towards me. And I say when a man will think that he can sin and sin and sin again and get by on me, I say that he's not worthy of my love. For I say such a man is a stubborn, proud, hard-headed fool, determined to have it his way when really he will end in a pit from the same. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do not call thee to end in a pit, but I say that I call thee to come forth in me. And I say that I call thee to be uplifted, directed, and corrected, ever guided forth in the newness of life that I provide. And I say that I call thee to know what it is to be kept, for it is me, the living God, who will keep thy soul. Now I say, therefore, this day be glad that I give thee the privilege to come forth, that I give thee the privilege to be uplifted and directed in me. And I say, be thankful each day that you have indeed been given the privilege to be loved by me. I say, do not be as the foolish who cast off my love in order to have their own way, or so they imagine, and really they go in the way of demons. And I say, they will find themselves in the end of it all, in the pit of despair, awaiting damnation. But I say, when a man will receive my love with thanksgiving and gladness, and dedicate himself wholeheartedly to serving me through repentance each day, and walking in humility in me, then I say that he's found well-pleasing. And I say that he will indeed be desirous of sharing the great love that he has received of me. Now I say this day that I the living God never called my people to settle as they have in this wayward generation in a place of greed, self-sufficiency, and self-delight and claim that it is my love. For I say it is not me that they are loving, but I say it is the God of self, and that is exactly what they are promoting in my name. But I say that my love is not selfish, nor does it insulate itself from the needs of those who are perishing in sin. But I say that my love reaches out, my love calls forth, and my love beckons for all men to repent. Therefore, I say, when you are indeed in repentance revolution, you are exhibiting, proclaiming, and declaring the love of God. For I say, there are many who run around and spout false delusional concepts of my love, but I say they do not strive to see men repent. But I say they only cover them over in the darkness of their sin and iniquity, and likewise bring their damnation upon them. And I say they are spreading their goop all over the land, but it is absolutely falsehood, not true at all. But I say that the true love that is found in me will call a man, will call a woman, will call a child to repent. That is, to turn from sin, to walk uprightly, and be found well-pleasing unto me. For I say, if any man will truly know my love, then I say that he will gladly abandon sin. And I say that he will likewise seek to please me through obedience in all that he does towards me. For I say that a man who truly knows my love will understand the impact of the same. And I say that he will literally tremble under the mercy that I've given unto him that he did not deserve. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do desire that my true ones would proclaim my love to a sin-sick, a perverse, a dying generation. For I say the ultimate love that I've come to put among men, to put among women and children, is my love for their souls. 
For I say it is me, the living God, who does love to see souls redeemed, to be brought forth in repentance, revolution in me. And it is me, the living God, who will give to the sons of men the love they do not deserve, if they will repent unto me. And I say it is because of my ultimate mercy that I do so, that I literally take my enemies and make them my friends. That is, by loving them, by giving unto them the light upon the path. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do call thee to reach out in my love. I say that I call thee to proclaim in my love the need to all men to repent. For I say it is truly the ultimate love when men are given the call to repentance revolution in me. That is, when they are given the opportunity, the privilege to enter into the fold through repentance and be found born again. That is, born of the seed that is incorruptible, the seed that I provide. I say this day, be thankful to be loved by me for the privilege to proclaim my desire to the sons of men. And I say, be thankful that you know what it is to be held captive by the power of my love. For I say that my love is meant to be an all-consuming force, and I say that it is meant to take all of your life. That is, till you are consumed of my love, because it is me you desire to please. Now I say this day, why not serve me with urgency, with fervency, with passion, because you are privileged to love me. That is, you are privileged to be loved by me, and likewise love me in return. For I say, when I, the living God, do call thee to repentance, revolution, and you do abandon the way of sin and choose to walk uprightly each day in me, then I say you exhibit your love towards me. And I say that you in turn will receive more of my love given unto thee. I say this day be thankful that the love that I do provide is not a drunken, delusional love that is full of falsehoods and pretension on him. But I say that the love that I provide is sobering, it is pure, it is undefiled. And I say there is great commitment that a man must make to be identified in my love, and that is totally giving himself over unto me. For I say it is me that my people are meant to serve with all of their hearts, with all of their strength, with all of their lives. That is, they are meant to be dedicated in the love crusade of repentance, revolution, that is going forth at this time, knowing that indeed they must extend the love that has been given unto them, that they can likewise increase in me. For I say, the more that you see others brought into the fold, into the love that I provide, I say that the more it enriches thee. For I say, you will see indeed there is fruit that comes forth of living and abiding in me. Now I say this day, be thankful for the privilege to love, to serve, to obey me, and be loved by me. And I say, be thankful that you can indeed be found in repentance, revolution, the humility way of my life each and every day. And I say, be thankful that my love is indeed a conquering force that will conquer the power of sin. And I say that my love is the conquering force that will cause thee to prevail over the wiles of the wicked again and again. For I say it is me, the living God, who will give thee the love strategies that will supersede the darkness, the evil, the iniquity that has been aimed against thee. Because I say that I reign supreme, I am the Almighty, the one you are privileged to love, to serve, and obey. It's time to repent. Chapter 3. Kill this is on the devil! You're not poor again if you're still practicing sin! Hypocrite! Repent! Jesus wasn't a Christian! Repent! You hypocrite Christian! You're lukewarm! You're ashamed of Jesus! Word. Don't tell me you're a Christian! Obama says he's a Christian! And he's a Muslim! You can't serve two masters! Repent! Or you will perish! Go and say until you get to heaven. Lots of things can happen between when you said the prayer which ain't in the Bible and when you die. You can deceive yourself by sin, the Bible says. Harden your heart through the deceitfulness of sin and call yourself saved. But you're going straight to hell. Like the Bible says, 
He who sins is of the devil, and the devil is your father, not Jesus. Now he commands all people everywhere to repent.